Good morning, and welcome to class 427's graduation. Well, got a few more people sitting down. At this time, I'd like to invite the Girl Scouts for the Pledge of Allegiance. Audience attention, please stand and remove all hats. Color guard attention. Color guard advance. Graduates, the flag will be passing down the center aisle and the flag will be posted on the left. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard dismissed. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'd like to take time to thank everybody for coming to celebrate the 11 new teams today. Before we get to know the teams, I'd like to thank a few groups of people that make today happen. If you are a breeder host, please stand. Thank you for housing our broods and studs. Puppy raisers, please stand. Thank you for your endless love and dedication for taking on the tasks of raising a puppy. Puppy sitters, please stand. <laughs> Thank you for giving our puppy raisers that much needed break from their puppy. Area leaders, please stand. Thank you for being our first line of defense for our puppy raisers and sitters. Volunteers, please stand. Thank you for doing your, the day-to-day -day work around the campus. Staff, please stand. Thank you for your continual commitment. A special thanks to the class instructors, Sean, Jasmine, Nicole, Jessica, Hannah, and Sean. <laughs> this month, we had five dogs join our breeding colony. Ariel, a black Labrador female raised by Sherry Lawrence. Bogey, a yellow lab male raised by Rachel Hess. Francis, a yellow lab female raised by Jessica Blake. Jerry, a chocolate Labrador male, raised by Ramona. <laughs> I knew that was going to get some excitement. And Merlot, a black lab female, raised by Lorena, who is going to be on stage again because she has latte graduating. So congratulations to those raisers.
To the puppy raisers who raised dogs that got career changed out of the program, your devotion doesn't go unnoticed. I'd now like to invite Russell Gittenland, president of GDATLC, to the stage. We, a, we have a pretty big program today. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to a lot of folks. Got some special guests out there we'll talk about. But I want to welcome everybody. I, I was a little worried that everybody's going on strike while my puppy raisers were going on strike on me because I was getting phone calls today and I didn't know what the heck was going on. They're like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it, and so on and so forth. Turns out it's a sick out. I guess because we have a little bit of kennel cough going on, they weren't allowed to bring their dogs, so they had to stay home. They stayed home with the dogs. But how about a big round of applause for all those folks that couldn't make it that are home taking care of those dogs for us. Thank you. Listen, uh, we got class 427. And uh, I just want to, it's a good place to start to talk about one of the folks that, and his family that are in the crowd. Um, with us today, I got a call a while back, actually it was an email, and it said, hey, just to let you know, David jo uh, that uh, Joseph Jones, the guy that founded this place, has a son. And it just, it piqued my curiosity because I didn't, I didn't know anybody was still alive. Um, and... I got, I got on the phone with this guy and said, hey, t tell, me, tell me the story. And he told me the story. And his, his son is here today. And David Hamilton's here. How about David Hamilton? We give a big round of applause. This is the son of Joseph Jan Jones, the guy that founded this place. I've, I've since got to know David, his wife, and, uh, and, and a very interesting guy. Um, what's really, what really intrigued me more than anything is he really didn't know his father growing up at all, but he led the same path in a lot of ways that his father did. He, he's part of the Lions, um, and he's always been involved with dogs, and on top of that, dogs that help out folks that, uh, that don't have sight. So how about that? That's, that's an interesting fact that he didn't know him, but yet he still followed the same, the same career and same, same thing. So thank you for being here. He said he was gonna come, and we, we're glad to have you. This is your family. So enjoy, enjoy your time here, all right? All right. Today's about celebrating 11 new guide and service dog teams. It's also a testament to the dedication, hard work, and unwavering support of our entire community. I want to take a moment and express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to each, of you, each and every one of you. Whether you're a trainer, a volunteer, a donor, a recipient, or, or <coughs> recipient of our services, or simply a supporter of our cause, your presence here today signifies the strength of our collective commitment to enhancing the lives of those in need. So a big round of applause to you, everybody out there. A friend of mine's in the crowd today, and he's, he's very important to me because he cuts the checks when they come from the Machinist Union. He, he co-signs, or he at least makes sure I get the checks. My friend Paul Kendall's here with his wife Raquel and, and their daughter Regan. How about a big round of applause for my friend Paul Kendall? And I'm not gonna leave out that Raquel works in air transportation. She's the confidential secretary for the air transportation department and they do a ton for us. They, if anybody that flies in here, all of our trainers and so on and so forth, my, my air transportation, Richie and Edison, they make sure we have, and Tom, they make sure we have um, all the, all the necessary tickets to get people where they got to go and anything we ever need. We just flew somebody in from Canada. Actually, Canada supported that, but they're, they're just always getting us stuff and we appreciate your group too, all right? Appreciate you. I have a really special presentation today. Where are you, Lucas? Lucas is right there. Um, I asked Lucas to speak today. I'm gonna step aside and let Lucas speak because I think he's gonna say a lot more than I ever could. Lucas, I want to I want to I want to give Lucas a big round of applause. Lucas, Lucas, Lucas was a, a incarcerated individual up at Mule Creek, and uh, he did he joined the Pooch program, and he's he's out now after 15 years, and he'll tell you about that. But uh, he made something of his life, and we had a part in that. So, Lucas, why don't you join me up here on stage? Everybody, a big giant round of applause for this guy. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
Yeah, so I spent half of my life in prison. Um, I didn't really have a purpose. Of course, the community or how the, my upbringings weren't the greatest, right? I did um, get incarcerated when I was 16 years old. Um, going to prison, I was still lost, confused. I didn't really have a lot of skills, right? So I remember in 2016, um, I was actually in prison. I was about 26 years old, and I joined the pooch program. They said that they were gonna have um, dogs that we could actually train for people with disabilities, and I had something I wanted to actually do good for the community and give back. Um, for me, it was very important for me to change or try to figure out why I ended up the way I did, right? Especially at a young age. Um, so being um, in the program actually changed my life, right? It gave me better skills. Uh, it led to me changing the way I thought. Um, I am currently working as a dog trainer at PetSmart. Uh, in Culver City. I, I use their, all the skills that I learned in there. I am a full-time student. I actually am I'm graduating this May for my Bachelor's of Science. I did get into it. <laughs> yeah, like I still remember like the first dog that I actually got in there to train. His name was Gus. He was actually a Red Fox lab that was actually given um, as to work as a team, and it's something that I fell in love with the dog. Even with the training, it's one of the things that I still remember the, um, like every moment that I actually shared. So I was able to kind of empathize, learn uh, ways to communicate effectively. Um, and like I said, I mean, now I still, so I did get into my master's program at Cal State LA. Um, so still working with people with disabilities. Um, so it's something I'm still very passionate giving to the communities. And I mean, it's one of the things that for me, service dog training, right, or being a trainer is one of the things that I was able to kind of use the same skills I learned in there to actually support myself out here. Um, so it's one of the things that when I did get out, when I did get out, I was actually um, transient. I was actually homeless, didn't have a place to go. So individuals actually helped me um, by a dog training. I got my own place now, I'm able to actually um, help other people keep continue keeping their pets at home and stuff like that. And I currently have a dog now that I'm still training as a facility dog. Um, Loki is actually, um, so like I said, I'm still in doing um, training dogs and stuff like that, going full-time student. And it's one of the things, thanks to like the Pooch program and still in contact with a lot of individuals that are um, doing good because of the program. The Pooch program was one of the things that it impacted my life um, to do better. Um, and like I said, it's. I had one dog that I was able to train. I did meet certain individuals that I did um, place. Well, Astro was another dog that he went to a disabled veteran. So it was very impactful to see how the impact it actually has on just the, the individual, but within the community and the communities in there as well. Um, thank you. I think Lucas is the perfect example of why I love the prison program so much. Um, it's, it's very important that the prison system continues to rehab and continues to find new ways of giving these folks hope after they get out. And uh, great job, brother. Appreciate you. Listen, next, uh, it's my privilege to recognize, and this is the part that always gets me choked up, and my wife laughs because I get all teary-eyed and stuff, but it is what it is. Uh, recognize our veterans in this class with a small token of our appreciation. Josh. Where are you, Josh? You're over there somewhere. There you are, brother. I got to know Josh a little bit through this, and he's a great guy. He's a Marine Corps uh, veteran that completed two combat deployments, too, um, to Helmand and, and Afghanistan for Operation Enduring Freedom. Brother, if you can come up here and join me on the stage, I got a little. So in case you didn't know this, uh, Tony over there was a Marine for a long time. He likes to tell me that all the time. He was a Marine for, for a long time, and he was also in the Army. It took him about four hours to fold this flag. And <laughs> <laughs> but listen, for helping us stay free, for all you've given, and hopefully we're giving back to you, we'd like to, on behalf of GDA, we'd like to present you with this flag. Thank you.
William, where are you, brother? You're out there. I saw you somewhere. There he is. My friend William over there is a retired Army First Sergeant who served for over 20 years of service. William suffers from PTSD due to military trauma that makes it difficult for Will William to function every day. And William, why don't you join me on stage? I got a little token for you, a little present for you. Guys, big round of applause. William, for keeping us free and safe. He said, whatever side the food's on. <laughs> Brother, for keeping us free and safe and making sure that, that we continue on as a free society. GDA, the least we can do is give you a flag and honor your service. How about a big round of applause? Everybody? Thank you very much. Okay, so Judy says, I do not give enough enthusiasm when I talk about sponsorships. I said, what do you want me to do? You want to do a little dance? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's always my pleasure to acknowledge and thank our kind sponsors who show up time and time again. A team sponsorship is our highest level of sponsorship, and today we have a very special collaborative effort on the part of three loyal friends. My friend, Mr. Eldrin uh, Sextro, the C. Can Foundation, and the Earl B. Gilmore Foundation. And for the second time, they joined us together to sponsor the team of Michael and Guide Dog Lassen. <laughs> All three of these generous sponsors have individually supported us in many ways over the years. And it's very special to have them join us once again in the sponsorship. A great example of the sense of community that we strive for in our mission. I believe Missy's here with Joe and representing the Gilmore Foundation. So I'd like to invite her on stage so we can thank her personally. Missy, where are you at? I saw you somewhere. Where is she? She left you out, Joe. She left you out, brother. <laughs> Listen, on, beha on behalf of Guide Dogs of America and all that you and your family and you and Joe and everybody you bring to GDA does, we just want to give you this little token of appreciation. So come Russ, on over. Thank you. You want to say something? I can't reach. <laughs> Nobody else is here, the other foundations, but I love this place, and anytime we can give back, and I'm fortunate enough, along with my sister, for the Gilmore Foundation to sponsor, do the sponsorship. So, Michael and Lassen, congratulations, and congratulations to the other 10 teams. Missy, was I excited enough? Huh? <laughs> I'm, getting re I'm getting graded after this. <laughs> our second team <coughs> sponsorship is from our friend Sandy Bennett from Kentucky. Sandy's a longtime friend and has supported us in countless ways throughout the years. Today, she generously sponsored the, the team of Josh and his service dog, Kona. Sandy's late husband, Otto, like Josh, was a Marine, so she sends special greetings and congratulations to this new team. She wanted me to make sure to share a message. Josh, thank you for your service, sir. So Sandy, you're a treasure. We couldn't do it without you. I know she's watching us on Facebook. She always does. She couldn't be here. She'd love to be here. How about a big round of applause for my friend Sandy Bennett, your friend Sandy Bennett. We also want to thank our friends Bob and Bertie Feldman for their student scholarship for, of Guide Dog recipient Chelsea. The Feldmans are loyal donors and have been supporting us for a number of years. 
They unfortunately are not able to be with us here today, but will be watching on Facebook and send their congratulations to Chelsea as well as our new partner, Rango. So how about a big round of applause for Bob and Bertie and a big thank you to the generous student scholarships. We also have several puppy sponsorships and we want, that we want to award. These donors contribute five grand to sponsor a puppy from the time it leaves the nursery with its puppy raiser until it returns to campus for formal training. They follow the progress through reports that the puppy raisers puts together or via a Facebook page dedicated to the sponsors. In case any of you would like <clears throat> that up and close and personal connection and would like to sponsor a puppy, we would love to hear from you. The first puppy sponsorship is for, for dog G uh, Jade and her sponsors is our longtime loyal friend, the Simi Valley Boots and Slippers Club. They have been sponsoring puppies for many years, many, many years, and they raise funds throughout the year, Square Dance. Their 2024 dance is coming up in June, and we will once again send a number of puppy over there to greet the dancers and spread the GDA TLC word. Thank you very much to uh, Simi Valley Boots and Slippers. Listen, we all, go ahead, you wanna clap for them again? Um, this is what she tells me I, I mess up on, so we're gonna, we're gonna get this right. We wanna, we, wanna, we wanna thank, we know we have SCS Elevator products out there watching, and I personally wanna thank you, I know you're not here today, but I wanna thank you for their sponsorship of Kona. Uh, an interesting fact, you know, uh, you know how when uh, you get on an elevator, the buttons also have the floor number in Braille? Well, SCS Elevator products was the innovator of the much needed assistance to the blind community. How about that? We need to thank them for that. Kona is their first sponsored puppy, and they have followed her through her progress attentively and posted everything about her on their websites and their Facebook pages. They are located in the Midwest, could not send a representative here today, but I can promise you they are watching this ceremony as we speak. They sent the following message to us. Everyone at SCS is very excited about Kona and Josh. The very best of wishes and luck to them. This process of sponsoring a GDA TLC pup has been very rewarding and a source of pride within SCS. We are happy to have been a small part of helping your organization. Congratulations to Sylvia and her husband. It must be a special day for them as well. Thank you, SCS, for your sponsorship of Kona and your continued support. Big round of applause for these folks. You know, just so you know, you know, this is all privately funded other than we do get a grant for some of the prison projects that we're doing. But basically, it's, it's really great folks like you that donate. It's people that leave us money in their wills. It's the unions. It's the corporations. It's a collaborative effort of everybody that makes this happen. But you make it happen pretty much on your own. Very little state funding. Um, big round of applause for you for that. My friends, my friends at the Ohio State Council Machinists and their sponsorship for Dog Laney. They have supported us greatly over the years, but this is the first sponsored puppy, and I have a feeling that they will be following up with another sponsorship, especially since Laney has made them so proud. Thank you to my friends out there at the Ohio Machinist for your support. You guys are terrific. I know I'm a little long-winded, but I just think it's very important that we recognize these folks and that we do a good job in, in, in thanking them. This is their moment where they get thanks. So we, have, we had a lot this time, so I'm going to go through a little more. Finally, we'd like to thank Carol George for her puppy sponsorship, New Breeder Bogey, and Susan Hoffman, a friend of ours, for her sponsorship of Future Mama Ariel. These dogs will pass along those great genes to the future generations of service dogs, and that is a big win, the, the gift that keeps on giving. Big round of applause for them. And we can't forget our class donors. They also, sponsor pup, they, they also sponsored a puppy, and the pup ended up being career changed, but we still want to recognize them. Carl Munstock, the Nicely Foundation, Susan Hoffman, Nadine Tilly, MIA, and the Carlson Muir Foundation for all their puppy sponsorships. Finally, we'd like to thank the following for their harness sponsorships. Orange County Group, harness sponsorship for Laney, Latte, and Gizmo. <laughs> T 
Ted and Janice King Harness Sponsorship for Bindi and Ico. Bob and Kathy Stegman in memory of Guide Dog Phoenix, Harness Sponsorship for Jade. And the San Diego Squad, Harness Sponsorship for Rango. Okay, I think that covers my end of it. Is that correct, Zachary? <laughs> uh, service dog class presentations. Listen, just real quick, I just want to take a second and just thank everybody for all you do around here. You guys, every day I see a lot of folks and uh, they're just working their hearts out and it's, from, it's, it's, it's just generosity that makes them do it. And uh, they work hard and they make this place happen. We seem to be getting better and better. Uh, I had a conversation with Natalie last week. It's pretty impressive. I don't know what our stats are right now on, on how many dogs make it, but I can tell you this. I, I noticed myself that the G litter, the K litter, the L litter, these, I mean, we got like almost the whole, the whole bunch of them graduating, which is, which is very impressive. It's a testimony to what the nursery has been doing. It's a testimony to what you've been doing. It's a testimony to what my, my Mindy and the group have been doing. Um, that's what we got to strive for. We got to strive to get every puppy on the ground working because that's where it's at. We can help more people that way. So big congratulations to everybody involved with that deal. Yeah. So with that, I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed the presentation, especially my friend Lucas. What do I got here? What are you pointing at? Huh? The events. Well, I'll tell you, the events aren't in here, so I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so they're, tell, they're telling me that I need to go to the back of the page here. Oh, yeah, you messed up on this here. Here, here you go. You got me for a couple more minutes here. As always, we want to give a special thanks to our NCL group. I don't know how I missed that. Uh, the members are on hand at every graduation, providing and serving refreshments, assisting family members, guests, and generously helping out whenever they can. Thank you, NCL. They're in the crowd out there. They're back there. Thank you. I'm sorry I missed you. Guys, we got, we got an open house on June 8th, um, and a lot of people have been working to make this thing really nice. It's going to be great. So please come out to that. On June 20th, we got a blood drive, and on June 29th will be the next uh, service dog graduation. So thank I'm Russ Gitlin, President of Guide Dogs America, my friend Tony back there, Assistant Director, and on behalf of all the staff that are here, uh, and we want to thank you for everything you do every day. All right? Let's welcome Nicole Maples up on stage. Hello. Uh, my name is Nicole Maples. I'm the manager of the Service Dog Program. Uh, I just want to start by giving a special thank you to my co-instructor and my other service dog team. It definitely takes everybody to make this all work. So Jess, Cheryl, Hannah, Sean, Sonia, who's not here today, thank you guys. Let's hear a round of applause for them. All right, I have the honor today of introducing you all to service dog graduates of this class. Um, we showed up halfway through the guide dog students stay here. I think we kind of disrupted things. We may have broke the internet. Um, but even through the past 10 days have been a lot. We've all made fantastic strides, and we've made great memories, and you've all done a great job, and I hope you hold on to those memories and cherish them. Uh, I'm really proud of all of you. You've stuck with the process, and we made it to the end. So good job, guys. All right, with that, we're going to watch a brief slideshow of pictures of some of the outings that we did during class. So I'm going to invite Jess up, and she's going to narrate the slideshow for everybody. Good morning, all. I don't know as, as much as I know you're all here to see me, just kidding. I'm going to go ahead and take your seat down here so you guys can see the slideshow, and I'll give you guys a couple words just about everyone and what you guys are seeing. Alrighty, so first up here we have recipient Sarah and her service dog Bindi, a black lab sitting in front of her posing for picture day. Per Bindi's request, Sarah did a fabulous job matching Bindi in that purple. 
<laughs> this is a good crowd. I like it. Okay. <laughs> Next on the left, we have Sarah sitting in the luscious grass outside Santa Monica Beach, whispering sweet, nothing into, sweet nothings into Bindi's ear as Bindi rests peacefully in Sarah's lap. For those of you who don't know, Bindi's love language is words of affirmation. <laughs> On the right, we have Sarah and Bindi taking a stroll through Balboa Lake. Sarah showed up in her cheetah print shoes, ready to take on the day, but Bindi had to explain to her that she likes to slow cruise and take in the scenery. <laughs> Next here, we have recipient Josh and his service dog, Kona, a black lab golden retriever cross sitting on the left. Little did Josh know when he first met Kona that he would spend many of his days getting lost in her beautiful brown eyes. Next on the left, we have Josh and Kona at Santa Monica Beach waving to the paparazzi. <laughs> Rumor has it, no one has seen a wave quite like Kona's. <laughs> on the right, we have Josh and Kona strutting their stuff around Balboa Lake. Kona knows once they get their steps in, it's snuggle time, and that's her favorite time of the day. <laughs> Next up, we have recipient Meredith and her service dog, Wisdom, a black lab waving to each other. Not sure who's teaching who, but we do know we have a match made in heaven. <laughs> Next on the left, we have Meredith and Wisdom hugging while on an outing at Santa Monica Beach. Wisdom secretly telling Meredith which toys he would like her to order off Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> on the right, we have Wisdom and Meredith again waving to each other at Lake Balboa. As Wisdom would say, why wave with one paw when you can wave with both? <laughs> Next up here, we have recipient Pollyanna and her service dog, Lainey, a yellow lab, hugging on a sunny day. Lainey does a great job reminding Pollyanna to not forget her SBF. As Lainey would say, snuggle, play, and fetch. <laughs> Next on the left, we have Lainey sitting in front of Pollyanna at Santa Monica Beach. Lainey was making sure that Pollyanna got the memo that on beach days, we wear pink. This duo never misses an opportunity for a matching bandana. <laughs> On the right, we have Pollyanna walking with Lainey at her side at Lake Bal Balboa. Little does Lainey know this is just the start to her trail trekking. She's about to join her new family on all sorts of new adventures. Next up here, we have recipient Troy and his service dog, Latte, a yellow lab, both waving to the camera. Just like your favorite morning brew, Latte is a perfect blend of energy and sweetness and guaranteed to perk up your day. Next on the left, we have Troy and Latte hugging at Santa Monica Beach. The hug may have been brief, but it was filled with a latte of love. <laughs> on the right, we have Troy and Latte taking a stroll along the water at Lake Balboa. Word on the street is the more ducks and squirrels Latte ignores, the more throws Troy promised her of her favorite red ball. <laughs> And last, here we have recipient William and his service dog Gizmo, a yellow lab golden retriever cross, sitting in front of him waving to the camera. Gizmo may appear bashful, but don't let him fool you. He has the biggest smile and tail wag on the block and isn't afraid to steal your heart. Next on the left, we have William sitting next to Gizmo at Santa Monica Beach. These beachgoers never, never miss a step when mobbing together. On the right, we have Gizmo sitting next to William while standing waterfront at Lake Balboa. As convincing as Gizmo was when he tried to recruit a few service ducks, Gizmo quickly learned who needs quacks when William has snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I'll go ahead and pass it back off to Nicole. been a very busy last 10 days. All right, let's get into our first set of graduates. Um, first graduate team that I'm going to invite up is going to be Sarah with autism service dog Bindi, if you want to make your way up. Sarah is a special education teacher turned full-time stay-at-home mom of three beautiful children with varying needs. Sarah and autism service dog Bindi will work together as a team to benefit her five-year-old son. Welcome, Sarah. Let's 
So I would like to start by saying that this has been the most incredible experience with the most amazing people and dogs. Everyone here at GDA has been so kind, caring, understanding, and supportive. Our trainers here are truly second to none and have gone above and beyond to get us to where we are today. And when I say us, I mean me, because Bindi already knows it all. Um, prior to pursuing a service dog for our son, um, we puppy raised dogs through a local organization. It is not lost on us the love and dedication that has gone into getting this girl to where she is today. We are so grateful to the GDA TLC community and everyone who has been a part of Bindi's life, especially her puppy raisers and incarcerated trainer. I'm continually amazed by all the things she knows. I'm excited to see how those things will benefit our son. I have been able to FaceTime with him a little bit while I've been here at GDA. Um, to see the pure joy on his face when he saw Bindi wave at him was such a beautiful gift in and of itself. But the best part is that is just the beginning of their story together. Bindi is truly the most amazing gift and we are so excited to begin this new chapter and can't wait to see the difference she makes in not only our son's life, but in our family as a whole. Thank you. All right, Bindi was raised by Chris and Emmy of the West LA group. They cannot be here in person, but wrote something that Catherine is going to come up and read for them. So we'll welcome Catherine up. Hello, everyone. So this is what Chris and Emmy wrote. They said, we really wanted to attend today's event in person, but we actually moved to Tokyo last year and are writing this letter from Japan. We will never forget the day that Bindi came to us. <laughs> it was literally a life-changing experience. She was handed to us in the parking lot of GDA, and we held her during the entire drive back home. She was our first dog ever, and we were really nervous before meeting her. But when we met Bindi, we immediately knew that she would bring much joy and love to us and everyone surrounding her. The two years training her and welcoming her as a family was a privilege. She will keep, we will keep and cherish our memories with Bindi forever. We miss her very dearly and we think of her all the time and her training reports that we got monthly was a highlight for us. But we know that she will be serving a higher purpose and we wish her and her new family the best. We would also like to take this time to thank Sheila and Allison from the West Group, Westside Group, and Hannah for their guidance and support. With much love, Chris and Emmy. Bindi was trained by Stephen Betty at the Mule Creek State Prison. So we've got a video from him that we'd like to show now. And I'm an incarcerated canine development trainer currently housed at Mule Creek. Next to me is Bindi. She's a three-year-old Labrador that was assigned to me a year ago to train. Uh, foremost, I want to thank Guide Dogs of America, Tender Loving Canines Assistance Dogs, and all the staff for creating and managing such a wonderful program with the vision and mission to transform lives through service dogs. I find it very rewarding having a part in providing fully trained assistance dogs for our wounded veterans to facilitate their return to public life as independently as possible. Thank you for your service. <sighs> Furthermore, GDA TLC assistance dogs also provides assistance dogs to families with autistic children and facility dogs to multiple agencies such as courthouses, fire departments, and hospitals that all benefit from a trained service dog's assistance. Wherever Bindi's place, <sighs> I'll be happy for whoever gets her, and I'm sure she'll make me proud of her. I'll remember the most about Bindi, how good it made me feel to experience the unconditional love that Bindi shared, the warmth that filled in my heart when I held her close, and some uh, hugs and kisses. Got some hugs and kisses. Her pretty little face reminds me of a curious sea lion coming up out of the water next to a surfer. Bindi has affected me in a positive way 
by my giving, being given the responsibility for care and training. It has improved my self-esteem. And I have become a more compassionate, empathetic human. And I have, who feels good inside about the fact that I'm helping to improve the lives of some very special people who deserve all assistance and love they can get. All right, our next team I'm gonna invite up is Josh and veteran service dog Kona. Josh is a Marine Corps vet veteran that completed two combat deployments to Helmand, Afghanistan for Operation Enduring Freedom. Let's welcome Josh and Kona up. Let's see if I can read this. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to thank uh, Guiding Dogs of America and TLC for this incredible experience. All the staff have done an amazing job with a special thanks to the trainers for putting up with us for uh, the, the training when we all had our own roadblocks and setbacks. Um, also, thank you to our team sponsor and our puppy sponsor and puppy raisers. I first met Kona during the demo dog for our class to which she proceeded to just kind of sit with me for about 45 minutes and um, we were done walking other, I was done walking other dogs after that. And you could just kind of feel the anxiety kind of melt away and the extra noise turned down while she just kind of sat and did therapy, uh, deep pressure therapy. So, um, As great as the staff is, I do think Kona chose me and they just kind of had to go along with it. <clears throat> so, once again, thanks to everyone, and I look forward to uh, our life together. All right, Kona was raised by Sylvia and Mike of the San Fernando Valley Group. Let's welcome them up. what an exciting day it was when we were chosen to be your puppy raiser to help guide you through your puppyhood. You were just a little black fur ball, barely seven pounds. You eagerly took to all the challenges we introduced. With your graduation today, you start a new journey with Josh. Along with your sponsor, SES Elevator Products, we are so happy and excited for both of you. Thank you. Kona was trained by trainer Del Long at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility. So we've got a video from him now. Hello, my name is Dale Long and I was Kona's personal trainer. I've been given this opportunity to speak with you about my time with Kona. Dave Jehovich also helped me uh, work with her. And we wanted to say thank you. I've heard Russ from GDA say training these dogs is doing God's work. We want to say thank you to the donors who made all this possible. Thank you to GDA staff, volunteers, and puppy raisers. If you're watching this and Kona picked you, congratulations. She's a great dog. I've been given three questions to answer for you. First is, what will I remember most about Kona? Second is, how has Kona affected me in a positive way? And third, what do I hope and wish for the new client? First, I want to say Kona is a sweet and affectionate dog. She loves people and is loyal and is a very hard worker. Second, I want to give some context to what, how Kona has affected me. Uh, prior to coming into this environment in my wrongful prosecution, I was a deputy sheriff for 10 and a half years. For nine and a half of that ten and a half years, I did underwater search and recovery. I recovered drowning victims, to, to put it bluntly. 
we would return people's family members to them after a, a tragic event. And it was, it was amazing work and it, truly life-changing. But I can tell you without question, this work is life-changing at, at a whole different level because you're giving people life. And the opportunity to change someone's life is a, is a blessing. So what do I hope and wish for the new client? I'm sorry. I pray Kona provides comfort, the comfort she provided me in this environment. So again, Russ has said training these dogs for their ultimate work is doing God's work. <laughs> sorry. And I pray that Kona brings a little light into your life. And I'm praying she's a blessing in your life. Congratulations. All right, next team I'm going to invite up is Meredith, an autism service dog, Wisdom. Meredith and Wisdom work as a dedicated team in support of her five-year-old son, Noah. They assist Noah with daily challenges related to autism, including easing transitions, regulating anxiety by providing calming sensory input, as well as improving his social and communication skills. The whole family is so grateful to GDA TLC for the amazing gift of Wisdom. Welcome, Meredith. hard to have to go after those touching inmate videos with them. First, a shout out to my husband Rocky, our wonderful babysitter Johanna, and my lovely mom, aka Mima, for holding everything together at home so I could be here. Hi Noah, hi Ada. Wisdom and I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow, and I love you. From the moment we heard from Hannah that we had a spot in this class and a dog match, we were extremely excited. Almost simultaneously, the worry and anxiety set in. How would the kids do at home without me for 11 days? California is a long way from Virginia. How will I manage my job with a packed training schedule? And also something so new and a bit outside of my comfort zone. If this trip had been for any other purpose, I would have surely canceled. But knowing the impact wisdom would have on our family got me on the plane and got my husband through a week and a half of solo parenting. <laughs> This class has been such an amazing experience on a few different levels. The GDA TLC staff, trainers, and volunteers are some of the most professional, compassionate, friendly, and patient people I've encountered. Everything about the client experience here is so intentional and well executed. Not only have I put down the foundation for a strong working team and bonded relationship with wisdom while learning a ton, but I have also had the opportunity for the first time to really interact with other parents of autistic children in a meaningful and impactful way. I am filled with hope for the future for my son and our family as a whole and so incredibly excited to see our partnership with Wisdom flourish. For this, I am deeply and forever grateful to everyone at GDA TLC. Nicole, Jess, Hannah, Cheryl, Sean, all of the puppy raisers, incarcerated trainers, donors, volunteers, and staff, thank you. You are impacting and enriching the lives of children and families in a lasting and meaningful way. And to my classmates, both groups, it was such a pleasure meeting each of you, and I wish you all the best successes with your dogs and your families, and look forward to following your journeys together. Thank you. Wisdom was raised by Anna of the Torrance Group, so let's invite her up now. Hello. 
Hello. Oops. Let's see. I'm short. <laughs> I'm so excited for Wisdom, and I'm so happy for Meredith and Noah, as I know Wisdom will make a great addition to your family, especially after meeting you. <laughs> um, many years ago, I had seen a puppy in training at our local farmer's market, and acting on my flashback, I googled service dog puppies and came up with GDA. Um, I applied, and the next thing I knew, I was picking up a puppy at a COVID puppy drive through here on campus. <laughs> wisdom was handed to me through my window, my car window, and Wisdom, <laughs> it was great. It has been, it, it had been at least, at least 15 years since I had had a puppy, and Wisdom brought chaos, joy, and love to my home. He was a constant companion, and he showered me with attention. GDA, TLC, and the area leaders held my hand through this journey. Um, and the puppy raising process. They gave me the, the confidence I needed to, to, and they gave me the confidence I needed for this journey, and I learned so much, and it was so rewarding to raise wisdom and watch him grow into the perfect little gentleman and the sweet boy that he has turned out to be. And I look forward to finding out more about Meredith and, and her family, and I know that wisdom will be a valued member of her family. Thanks. All right, Wisdom was trained by Desmond Perry at Mule Creek State Prison. We've got a video from him now. I remember him most about Wisdom, as I remember his personality the most. Once he's bonded to you, uh, Wisdom's loyalty will become the fullest. That's his strong suit. One day, my back was really in pain, and Wisdom jumped to help me. He's always happy, and from staff and inmates alike call him, because everybody loves him on his yard. One day, I was engaging with Wisdom one day, and one of the handlers here said, you talk to Wisdom like he's a child. Mm -hmm. And I thought back to six years ago when I took care of my kids. And Wisdom has brought back the empathy, the patience, and responsibility of taking care of another person. And, another, and most importantly, he's given me the chance to do the right thing to the community and give back. He has relieved my anxieties. Uh, I hope that wisdom gives you the peace and happiness that he has given everyone here at Mill Creek and become part of your family as much as he became a part of ours. Next up, I'm going to invite Pollyanna and autism service dog, Lainey. Pollyanna is the mom of three boys. Two of her boys are autistic. Their dog, Lainey, will help her 11-year-old son mitigate difficulties he experiences due to autism. Lainey will help with emotional regulation, social interactions, and allow her son to better navigate a world that can oftentimes be overwhelming. Their family is excited about the positive changes Lainey will bring. They are also excited for the adventures they will have together with Lainey. Welcome, Polly and Lainey. I want to thank Guide Dogs of America for this life-changing experience and gift. Lainey brings so much hope to our family. <laughs> It'll be wonderful to have a healing family member with us at all times. And Carly and family, I want to thank you. Carly, I want to thank you for being her first mama, for selflessly loving Lainey. Sorry, y'all. I'm a crier. I've cried all week. So <laughs> I want to thank the sponsor of Kleenex. Just kidding. Uh, I probably need their sponsorship. Um, Thank you for selflessly loving Lainey and for your sacrifice in letting Lainey go fulfill her purpose. We are forever grateful. Thank you to her incarcerated trainer. Thank you for all the love and time you put into Lainey. Your dedication and her training shows. Staff trainers up north, thank you for helping shape Lainey into the amazing dog that she is. Cheryl and Hannah, <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> thank you for putting up with me and all of my anxiety. <laughs> You picked the absolute perfect girl for us. <laughs> um, you guys knew all along what was best. Oh gosh, a little, a little, uh, a little lesson in trust for me. Um, 
Lainey is beyond what I could ever have asked or imagined for. You're beautiful. Um, to Nicole, Jess, and Sean, thank you for your patience with me. I know I wasn't the easiest customer this week. Thank you for still believing in me and teaching me what I need to know to take care of beautiful Lainey. To my classmates, thank you for being with me. It's been a joy to be with you guys, and I look forward to watching your journeys and following that. Kristen and Ziggy, thank you for helping me through this process of waiting. I couldn't have done that without you. Um, to Jen Kenline, thank you for cheering us along the way and helping with this process. To my family and friends, thank you for listening to my continual talk about this dog for the past years. <laughs> past year, year. You're going to love her. She's beautiful. Um, to the grandparents, thank you for watching the kids back home and our friends that have helped out. Lainey is more than we could have ever asked for or imagined. I can't wait to go many places with her. She's going to help our son so much. Um, we plan to give her the best, most wonderful life we can. Boys, our helper is here, and our new life starts now. Thank you. All right, Lainey was raised by Carly and family of the Orange County group. So let's welcome them up now. There we go. Okay. So the moment I picked up Lainey, I knew she was special and would do great things. She was always so enthusiastic to work and was such a fast learner and is one of the happiest and sweetest dogs you will ever meet. Sorry. <laughs> Lainey is also such a loving and snuggly girl. When sitting on the couch, she would often rest her head on my leg and give me her best puppy eyes until I got down on the floor with her. Oh, and I hope you love puppy kisses because those are her specialty. <laughs> Lainey spent most of her days at the puppy in training in school settings. She went to elementary school with my dad, who was a third grade teacher, high school with my sister, and college classes with me. She probably would have earned a degree by now if she hadn't slept through all her lectures. <laughs> But luckily, she must have been paying attention to her trainers. I always had a feeling Lainey would go the service dog route. She has always been amazing with children and bonds so deeply with her people. I can already see how strong the bond is between you and Lainey, and I can't wait to see the bond grow between Lainey and your son. I feel so lucky to have been, raised, been able to raise such an amazing girl who at times made raising seem easy. But I couldn't have done it alone, so I want to say a huge thank you to my amazing Orange County group and amazing group leaders. It really does take a village to raise a puppy. I also want to say thank you to my family, especially my parents, for helping me raise Lainey and supporting me throughout this journey. I, haven't, I couldn't have done it without you guys. A question most raisers often get is how we can give these dogs up, and this is how. I can already see how much Lainey has changed you and your family's lives, and it makes my heart so happy to see how much love you have for her already. This is her purpose. She was meant for you and your son, and I can't imagine a more perfect match. I am so proud of Lainey, and I cannot wait to see all the amazing things you guys will do together. Lainey was trained by trainer Ronald Prasad at the Mill Creek State Prison, so we have a video from him now. Lainey's gentleness, her loving way of just wanting to be next to me, and how her eyes scream for love. Uh, after teaching her 60 cues and helping her become a service dog, uh, she also became my emotional support dog as well. As my father lay ill and eventually passing due to health issues on December 27th, Lainey was there for me to hold, cry, and love as I mourned my father's passing. Lainey continued to give me purpose, and I knew I must keep myself going for her because certain days I didn't want to move, but I knew I have to for her. Lainey's love and drive to please will be felt no matter who receives her, but that lucky person who does will have their days brightened up when it's stormy. Lainey will give you that hug when you need it the most. And lastly, Lainey will be your ray of sunshine and she will always be mine. All right, next team. Uh, Troy, an autism service dog, Latte. 
Troy is a designer, a grateful husband, and the proud father of a seven-year-old girl who is the recipient of the amazing service dog, Latte. He's excited for the journey his family is taking with their new addition and thankful for all of their work and support that has gone into this wonderful job, dog. Thank you, welcome. Thanks a lot, Ted. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here for my daughter. She is seven years old. She's got really long blonde hair. Uh, we haven't been able to cut it in about five years. Um, she has an uh, expressive face, an infectious smile. Uh, and an awesome autistic brain. She's good at a lot of things, um, but she also struggles with uh, getting along in a world that's built for neurotypical people. Um, my wife and I have done uh, a lot to figure out the right support for her, um, help her learn, uh, help accommodate her in the world, and uh, that led us to uh, applied to GDA and TLC, and um, that led to a visit with uh, Hannah and Cheryl and, um, and the wonderful Latte. Um, Lucy doesn't really, well, Lucy's actually, she's very verbal. She's very chatty. She's clever. She's imaginative, but um, a lot of people don't really get to see that. Uh, is as much as she's um, as much as she talks, she doesn't talk at all at school. And generally, when she encounters strangers, she won't speak. Um, and nor when strangers come to the house. But uh, I knew we were on the right track when Latte paid a visit to our house. And within about five or ten minutes, she was um, giving Latte verbal commands. She was running and playing in the yard. Uh, she was she was speaking and um, and just she was being herself that uh, my wife and I know that she is um, and it was so wonderful to to see that um, on just just the visit with Latte. So I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring home Latte today um, for to to meet my daughter and my wife in person. Uh, we've been chatting pretty much every day uh, over video. My daughter can spend, uh, well, as, as long as I have phone battery, just, just watching her. <laughs> and, um, and I'm gonna return with uh, my heart uh, full of hope from this um, to continue the, the progress that we saw just on that initial impactful visit over the phone, um, everything that I've experienced this week um, and being matched with this amazing dog. Um, I just want to thank so many people in this room uh, who made this possible. Um, her, her trainer, who I met today, Lorena, who uh, happened to raise Latte in the same city that I grew up in. Um, uh, her inmate trainer, Richard, um, all the trainers here, all the support staff, um, everyone along the way who has made it possible for uh, Latte to join our home. Um, and of course, all the all the sponsors and donors who who make this possible. Um, I am so grateful. Um, my family is so grateful to you. Thank you. Let's go. Latte was raised by Lorena of the Huntington Beach Group, so let's welcome her up now. All right, I think I got all my crying out of the way, so. Um, so Latte was my first dog as an adult and first puppy in training. I was able to take her to work um, every day, um, we did almost get kicked out of work the first day because she, the cubicle life was a, um, 
a little too boring for spunky little latte. <laughs> she enjoyed putting on her vest and working on different outings. Uh, latte could spend hours playing fetch and tug, as Troy has already <laughs> uh, mentioned, um, which meant that during the time I had latte, I actually took my lunch and lunch and breaks every day. Um, Latte forced me to go on many new adventures together, such as riding the train, trying out new restaurants, coffee shops. Um, we even went well watching, and we saw incredible whales. Our friend Patty actually took us to a Ducks game once, and Latte managed to get us upgraded seats. So that was very cool. <laughs> um, Latte has impacted many lives, and working in the Human Resources Department, uh, she eased stressed out applicants and wel welcomed many new employees into the Ocean View School District family. I questioned my capability of being a puppy raiser during the first few sharky months, but I'm so thankful for the village that helped me through. To the friends in the office and at home that played or walked her while, while I took a little rest. Um, to our OC area leader, Tammy New, for the extra one-on-one um, -on -one support and for the many puppy swaps uh, with Holly Shogren um, because Latte enjoyed the active school life versus the office life. Um, and she loved being surrounded by kids. Um, thank you to Mindy for providing the extra support when she started, as soon as she started at GDA. And thank you to Ocean View School District for allowing this program to fl flourish in our district. Um, there's been 15 dogs raised in our district now. Um, <laughs> and special thanks to um, our Building B, especially the HR and Personnel Department for being patient um, with Latte because she made her presence very well known. <laughs> um, my heart is so happy um, that she got matched with the child and she will, she's already making such an impact and she's already loved so much by um, her new family. Um, extra excited that she's going back to the OC um, where she grew up. Um, Latte will always have a piece of my heart. Um, love you, Latte. Latte was trained by trainer Richard Tovar at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility. So we have a video from him now. My name is Richard. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Latte's uh, trainer at RJD. Uh, when I first met Latte, I was immediately struck by her positive energy and her heart full of love. As our bond developed, um, it provided me with newfound structure, um, with, with the having the responsibility to take care and train her. Um, yeah, I, I felt a renewed sense of purpose, self-worth, and a desire to become the best person um, or the best version of myself. Um, I learned patience and, and discipline. Latte taught me empathy and the importance of understanding and meeting the needs of others. I learned the true meaning of forgiveness and and second chances with the GDA TLC uh, program. Latte and I learned um, and grew together. Um, this, this gave me the motivation to do, be the very best I could be. Um, uh, Latte is the best. Through every training session, every game of fetch, um, every snuggle, she exemplified resilience, love, and the desire to make a positive impact in someone's life. Uh, she is the sweetest and most amazing dog, and I will miss her very much. Um, I'll never forget the way she does her cute little hops when she plays. Uh, I'm grateful that I was given the opportunity to train her. Uh, my best wishes to the new family um, that's receiving her. I know she'll be a wonderful addition. I hope she brings the kind of healing that she brought me and everyone here she's interacted with. Um, she loves to be of service. And I'm excited for the family that, that gets to see her flourish in our new journey in life. All right, our last, but certainly not least, service dog team I'm gonna invite up is William and veteran service dog Gizmo. 
William is a retired Army First Sergeant who served over 20 years of service. William suffers from PTSD due to military trauma that makes it difficult for William to function every day. Let's welcome William and Gizmo. Good morning, everyone. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, GDA. They have been outstanding in the work that they are doing for all service members and people that are blind. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you because you are changing lives. I came here 10 days ago. I was filled with stress and anxiety. Didn't think that I would be able to make the program. but. The first day was really challenging, very tough, very hard. The second day, we had the opportunity to play with some dogs, and my eyes lit up. And that was the moment that I know that I could come through this program. And a few days later, I was matched with my dog, and it was life-changing. And I didn't even think of stress and anxiety anymore. Because when I looked in the eyes of my dog, I knew that my life would change, and it did. Today I stand before you with open heart, my eyes are bright, I have no anxiety, and I'm shining. I just want to thank GDA for all. I just want to thank GDA and the staff, they are outstanding. And I love the work that they are doing. And I would highly recommend any members that are dealing with anxiety, depression, of any type of mental issue is to get in contact with GDA immediately because they could help you and save your life and give you a good quality of life. And I just want to thank everyone, including our instructor, which has been outstanding. I honor them. I love everything that they have done and showed me and how to take care of my dog, which that I will continue the training so that I will have good quality of days. And thank you. Gizmo was raised by Valerie and family of the Long Beach Group, so let's invite them up. Hello. Um, first, I'd like to say that this was an incredible learning experience for me and that I'm so glad to have joined. Gizmo was not only my first GDA puppy, but he was also the first dog I've ever raised. So that makes him very special. Uh, sorry, I'm a little emotional too. <laughs> Before I got Gizmo, I was so nervous that I was about to tell my area leader, Nancy, that I couldn't do it. I was going to back out of the program. But she convinced me that I would have a lot of support and that I would never be alone in this. So I went ahead and started raising. So thank you to Nancy and the South Bay team, the GDA staff, and my family, because if not for them, I would not have discovered how meaningful mm -hmm. and how, it, how joyful this adventure would be. Secondly, to William, I'd like to say congratulations because Gizmo is a wonderful dog, and I know he'll do his best with you and him as a partner. During the time that we raised Gizmo, my family and I had a lot of fun learning and laughing with him. We made so many good memories together, so we believe that you two will make the most amazing memories going forward. Just as you'll take good care of Gizmo, Gizmo will take good care of you. Congratulations again, and we wish you the best life has to offer with Gizmo by your side. Gizmo was trained by Arthur Henderson at Mule Creek State Prison. We have a bit video from him now. Hello, my name is Arthur and this is Gizmo. 
The thing I'll remember most about Gizmo is his love for people. Gizmo has always enjoyed being with me and doing things for me. The thing that I learned about him is that good communication takes a lot of time and, and patience. Gizmo taught me that. The thing I would like for the client to, re, to uh, know about Gizmo is that please give him a lot of love and trust and I know he'll return that tenfold. To Ms. Parisi, Maples, and Harmon, and everybody who made this possible, thank you. And to the puppy raisers, we could have never did this without you. I want to thank you for giving Gizmo the confidence, the love, and trust to make him the amazing dog that he has become. To all of my fellow trainers who joined together to make this possible, thank you. With that, I want to say congratulations one more time to our service dog recipients in class 427. One more round of applause. <laughs> I can't wait to continue to follow your guys' journey, and I look forward to hearing about everything that you guys conquer and do as new teams out there. And now I'd like to invite Sean up to introduce our guide dog recipients. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sean Childs. I had the luxury of uh, leading uh, the guide dog group. Uh, alongside me, I had a fantastic, uh, we, lots of words I could use for you, Jasmine, but uh, fantastic, <laughs> absolutely great, uh, inspiring instructor coming up in the world of Guide Dogs America, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you continue to blossom into. Uh, there's a lot of uh, thank yous I'd like to give. Uh, at this particular point, sorry, there's a lot of thank yous I'd like to give uh, right now because you know, even though myself and Jasmine got to finish it, it didn't happen without a lot of you guys out here, okay? Our poppy raisers, all of our support staff, uh, the kennel staff, the, the training staff. Uh, I'd also like to thank all of our uh, dorm attendants, uh, Jerry, uh, Alicia, Janice, Missy, Lori, uh, Alicia, Dick, and Nina. In addition, our airport transports, Missy again, uh, Joe, uh, Shannon, and Patrick. Um, our uh, dorm staff, our cleaning group, and our uh, cooks. Without them, they wouldn't make the, the dorm very uh, livable, and they make it very awesome for us. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Patty and the Askenazi Oscar Development Group uh, down in San Fernando. Uh, she and her company uh, allow us a space in, uh, in, a, in a nice little indoor patio area where our guys get to uh, hang out for when we're doing our basic route in San Fernando. Um, I'd also, uh, yeah. Uh, now, to the class. Our class comes from all over the United States, Louisiana, Central California. We also have somebody from Canada. Can't forget her. Uh, our class ranges from 30 years old to 76 years young. We have five students that join us, uh, three receiving their very first guide dog, one receiving his second, and another receiving his fourth. Okay. Over the last three weeks, all these guys have put a lot of time and effort to independently learn how to handle and manage their dogs in a variety of different scenarios. Uh, and I have to say that they've all passed with flying colors, okay? Uh, they are ready to move on to their next journey in life. Uh, and therefore, <laughs> today it is graduation of these five young, or five y f great individuals and their new partners. Congratulations, my guide dog class of two, uh, 427. Next, I'd like to introduce Jasmine, and she's going to give us a little detail on the slides. Hello, everybody. Pardon me while I recover from the service dog graduation. I was crying in the corner over there, OK? So <laughs> bear with me. Here we have a guide dog, Rango, with his new handler, Chelsea, on their first walk on Glen Oaks. Chelsea's able to keep her head held high and focus on the road above now. 
And here's the team walking in downtown Burbank, much more comfortable getting the, getting the groove. Here we have guide dog Aiko with her new handler, Chris, and I can't tell by the look on Chris's face, but I think it's going well. <laughs> Here we have a photo of Aiko and Chris on a corner of downtown Burbank where he is petting her chin and she's focused on the road above. Here we have guide dog Jade with her new handler, David. And I didn't know David could smile so big. Here we have a photo of Batman being photobombed by the guide dog team, David and Jade, but I don't think he minds. Here we have a photo of guide dog Ford with his new handler, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill and Mr. Ford, the two gentlemen of the class. And here we have another photo of Dr. Bill and Mr. Ford walking in downtown Burbank. Here we have a photo of new guide dog team Lassen and her handler Michael. I believe this is the exact moment where Lassen's name got changed from Lassen to Baby. And here we have a photo of the team crossing the street in downtown Burbank. Uh, this photo rivals a Beatles album cover. <laughs> Thank you. All right, as we start to... In, uh, in I'd like to introduce uh, our first recipient, uh, Dr. Bill and Ford. Ford is a Yale Labrador Retriever. Uh, Dr. Bill is a 76-year 70, young and currently living in Fresno, California. He is a solo ager with two children. He, is a, uh, he has a doctor of education specializing in leadership and change and a retired Cal State, Uni or Cal State University I almost said Fullerton, sorry, Fresno <laughs> School of, and I can't ever do that, <laughs> gerontology uh, faculty member. He enjoys creating themed uh, ta uh, table scribes, decorating his front door and porch and flowers, and taking a f uh, fast art workshop. Ford is his fourth guide dog, uh, all from GDA. Unfortunately, Ford has a cough. You should never give a professor a microphone. <laughs> Welcome class to 427 graduation. I've rewritten a speech about 10 times. And you should have never let me listen to the service dogs because I've cried the whole time. But I'm the old timer of the group but 76 is the new 56. <laughs> Don't use the word elderly because we're not broken. We still work, we still participate in community. I introduced solar ager because it's the new term for widower. But I'm honored as a faculty member and professor because th three of my previous students in some form or manner are here. <laughs> and also Dick and Nina, you heard their name mentioned a minute ago. I had a massive coronary in 2007 and they took care of my third guide dog, Farley. Uh, I had Greg look up, when Greg called me about this class, because he kept telling me, oh, it'll be May, June, July. 
He called a, f a week or so before the class and said, can you come now? I said, well, yes, no, I gotta reschedule a few things like installation of a new solar system. But that worked out. They're gonna do it on Monday when I return home. And I asked him to tell me how long I've been with GDA, 38 years. I've had three dogs. Now this is the fourth. So I also wanted to tell my colleagues in class, it just dawned on me this morning that they could all be my children <laughs> or I could be their grandfather. So you choose which one you want. I'm only a phone call away or an email away. We've learned a lot. Uh, I've learned a lot of new words because the training is very different from 30 years ago. The other thing that I learned was when they said Head Start, I thought of Head Start with kids, but it's Head Start with puppies that are going to puppy raisers. So I learned some new words. As an, as an older adult, a lesson you can take away, you learn for the rest of your life. You need to learn a new word, a new concept, a new opportunity. So thank you for the opportunity for coming back and thank you, Jasmine and Sean. Ford was raised by Donna, Rich, and Joni. They are represented today by Donna. They are from the Santa Clarita area. Hello. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate all of our graduates today. Um, when I was a kid, I got to read a book about someone raising a guide dog puppy, and I knew right away that that was something that I really wanted to do. Um, it was quite a few years later when I became an adult that I actually got to start. So Ford is my 14th puppy. He's my, he's my second dog through GDA. I had dogs from a, a different school before. And out of 14 puppies, nine have graduated. And I'm really excited to be here today. This is the first graduation I've actually gotten to attend for different reasons. So um, I'm very excited that uh, Dr. Bill and Mr. Ford are graduating today and off to their new life together. Ford got to grow up on a ranch and was around chickens, goats, donkeys, things like that, and got to go with us to my son's school and hang out with the kids, so he absolutely adores kids. So if you're ever around kids, he loves them. Um, we called him Forty Boy, so it's fun to see that he's now graduated to Mr. Ford. So thank you for this opportunity, and I'm really glad to have gotten to meet you, Dr. Bill. And um, I'm excited that we're going to become friends and get to keep in contact with you over the years to come. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Chelsea and Rango. Rango's a black Labrador retriever. Chelsea is 30 years young and lives in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. During her 17 years as a Royal Canadian Cadet Program and eight years as in the Canadian Navy, she has traveled over 22,000 nautical miles and swim in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Arctic oceans. She en enjoys crochet and listening to audiobooks. Rango is her first guide dog. Now, I bet you're all gathering why I've gathered you here today, and it's because I have a problem, and it's going to be really hard to not come back to GDA all the way from Canada, okay? <laughs> not want to get on that plane all the time and come visit this beautiful campus and all these wonderful people. I mean, I'm not going to miss the roller coaster ride that Jasmine put us through every day in the van, but... <laughs> <laughs> you have to blame the California freeways, I suppose. <laughs> uh, definitely an experience. As somebody who has a fair amount of residual vision, uh, it's been someone who didn't think they would qualify for a guide dog. It's been life-changing to stop looking at the ground when I walk to look at the sky again. <laughs> I, uh, I like my feet, but not that much. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, an amazing school, this place. It's been a two-year journey to get here, and Greg and the team have been so supportive and understanding 
of the delays <laughs> in getting here. And I have never felt so honored to finally meet a dog that has the same judgmental face that I do. So <laughs> good luck to my friends and family back home. Uh, thank you, everyone, for everything that you have given to us so far. <laughs> uh, Rango was raised by Samantha and Steve. They're represented today by Sue going to come up and give a little word. They're from the San Diego area. Samantha's not here with us today. She's with uh, two dozen kids at a, at a uh, debate tournament up in the Bay Area. So it was something she was uh, sorry not to miss the graduation, but that's the way it rolled. Um, I do have this message from her. Uh, she says, we are so grateful to have Rango among all these exceptional guide and service teams. When we first met Rango, we fell in love with his playful energy and joyful spirit. He loved chasing his tail, playing in his kiddie pool, even when it didn't have water in it. <laughs> and he absolutely loved a game of hide and seek. But Rango also exuded an uncommon regality and stately presence that set him apart, drawing compliments from onlookers during our outings. Everywhere we went, people would comment on his good looks, calling him a tall, dark, and handsome boy. <laughs> he drew praise for how well he behaved and how quickly he learned. As we explored the world together, I was constantly amazed by his intelligence. His eagerness to please and learn more made us better and more disciplined trainers. And now we couldn't be prouder to see him by Chelsea's side, changing her life for the better. Our hearts swell with pride at the thought of this incredible duo as they venture on life's journey together. Thank you to all who have supported us along the way, the puppy department, the trainers, all of the GDA staff, and especially the San Diego squad. <laughs> they say it takes a village, and I'm so glad that we are part of this one. We are so grateful for the love and support you have given us in Rango. We always knew Rango had what it took to be a guide dog, but what we didn't know was how lucky he was going to be to have Chelsea. We are so humbled to see Rango fulfill his destiny as Chelsea's loyal guide and friend, wishing you and all of, all of you, all of the new teams, the best on your journey to come. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Chris and Iko. Iko is a Yale Labrador Retriever female cross. Uh, Chris is 42 years young and lives in Harahan, Louisiana. Uh, he has a life partner, Connie, and four children. He's self-employed, massage therapist, and a jack-of-all-trades, even with no vision. Chris is an avid outdoors enthusiast who enjoys fishing, camping, and hiking. Iko is his second guide dog from Guide Dogs America. How's it going? <laughs> um, yeah, of course, we got to hit listen to all these stories behind it. It makes it very difficult. Um, first and foremost, I really want to thank uh, the puppy raisers. I can't imagine, you know, what you guys do. This is my second dog. And uh, I really want to thank Debbie, Tim, and Savannah for raising Summit, my last dog. Uh, rest in peace. And... Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, and then Jennifer and Kevin, thank you for raising Iko. Uh, she is just amazing. And uh, she had a lot of shoes to fill, honestly. I am wild. I like to really do a lot of things that they say blind people shouldn't do, like hiking and fishing and not on a, in a park. <laughs> it's just some really outdoorsy stuff. Um, and this dog has just been great, honestly. Uh, just I really look forward to having her. And then um, most importantly, Sean and Jasmine were just awesome. 
Um, Sean had me last time, and uh, just, you know, it's just been such a great experience here. So, and uh, just thank you. Ike was raised by Jennifer and family. They are from the San Diego area, represented today by Jennifer. Thank you. I, too, thank the sponsors of Kleenex for today's event. <laughs> um, it was fun seeing Iko actually up here, and she spotted everybody that she remembers, her Uncle Jeremy sitting in the front row, and <laughs> the whole family. Um, but I'm Jennifer. I'm here with my husband, Kevin. Uh, so I must confess, when Iko first entered our lives, I had no idea just how much chaos cuteness could bring. But here we are, proud puppy parents, alongside our mischievous puppy squad from San Diego. From day one, <laughs> from day one, Iko seemed destined for greatness. Each night, I would grab her scrunchy face and whisper to her that she was destined to do great things for someone someday. Iko took those whispers and ran with them, quite literally. But it wasn't just about her destiny. Iko didn't just bring joy and purpose into our lives. She created a community tighter than I could have ever imagined. My heart swells with pride for her, and I am filled with joy at the thought of her living a vibrant and fulfilling life with Chris. Now, let's talk about some of Iko's adventures with her canine crew. Her brothers Archer and Anza, and her cousin Raman. Sounds like a recipe for a good time. They quickly became her best buddies, from rolling around like a cloud of dust to the many fun outreach events they spent together wooing the public. But some of my favorite moments were the endless puppy pool parties and holiday events at our home. Aiko was the hostess with the mostess, and she loved having her crew over for these fun, let loose times. This spunky, rambunctious girl always held her own with all the boys and loved to showcase her playful spirit. It's only fitting today she graduates with Chris and is heading home to a house full of boys. <laughs> In Japanese, Aiko means little loved one. And let me tell you, she's lived up to that name and then some. So here's to you, Aiko, my fearless buddy and constant companion. May your journey with Chris be filled with treats, toys, and the occasional squirrel chase. Congrats. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce David and Jade. Uh, Jade is a Yale Labrador, Labrador Retriever female. Uh, David is a 44-year-old um, and lives in Torrance, California. Through, though he is a, originally from Ohio, sorry. Ooh. Uh, he is single and a student at the Braille Institute, where he in, enjoys taking art classes. David is an avid hand radio operator who also enjoys reading and writing YouTube videos on technology and sci-fi. Jade is his first guide dog. Uh, it's been a great three weeks. Uh, I was matched with a great guide dog. Thank you, Guide Dogs of America. Uh, Jade was raised by Bob and Kathy. Uh, they are today, represented today by Bob. Uh, they are from the Simi Valley Group. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob. I'm a volunteer here at Guide Dogs, and I've been so for 24 years. I've got one question to ask. Why aren't you? Okay. First, let me begin by thanking Simi Valley Boots and Slippers for their sponsorship of Jade and for the continuing support of the puppies and training program. To GDA TLC for giving me the opportunity to raise Jade. To Pam English, who coordinated countless training opportunities to promote the success of our puppies and training. To our wonderful area leaders, Debbie Prince and Diana Janke, for their help and support. 
And finally, to Kathy for supporting me in this ever-continuing adventure and for picking up her fair share of poop. <laughs> Back to Jade, our 16th puppy, fourth guide dog graduate. <laughs> what a wonderful puppy she was. Housebreaking was a breeze. Actually, thanks to Melissa for fostering her for the first seven weeks. She did all the heavy lifting through those first tough weeks of potty training. Whew. Melissa said that J.D. girl was great, but she sure loved to bark. You could hear her from three flights down protesting, hey, you forgot me. <laughs> Jade came to us ready to conquer the world. Her training continued and she excelled at anything you threw at her. Walks in the park, shopping adventures in the mall, Costco runs, farmer's markets. County fairs, train trips, bus trips, subway rides, museums, aquariums, grocery stores, restaurants. Well, you get the idea. She was one busy girl. Nothing ever seemed to faze her. You name it, she did it. And did it with confidence and enthusiasm. Her first evaluation reflected, Jade is a lovely dog, incredibly easy to walk and willing to work with a new handler. Her response to obedience is impressive. She is adorable, and I enjoyed working with her. Thanks for all you do. That about sums it up for Jade. Easy to walk, willing to work, very adorable, and a pleasure to work with. All too fast, that litter comes advising that your dog has been through its training, and it's time to return to GDA for it to finish. Jeepers just when they develop that autopilot mode. <laughs> oh well, but the next big step to becoming a service dog, besides learning the skills that they need to become a successful guide, apparently they learn how to write. Postcards periodically arrived documenting her journey to becoming a guide. It's a fun way to keep in touch. Then the call. Your dog has been matched and is graduating. Nothing can compare to the joy of watching the teamwork. We had the opportunity earlier this week to see Jade for the first time since her turn in at Halloween and meeting her new partner, David. Jade was mostly calm, paying more attention to David than she did to either of us. At one point turn in during our meeting, David asked if we had any funny stories to tell about her. She was such the goody two-shoes good girl and nothing immediately came to mind. And then I remembered Jade had that unique ability of sensing when you're just about to take a picture. Therefore, I have a whole folder of pictures with Miss Jade with her eyes closed. <laughs> it became sort of her hallmark. Napping on her feet is her superpower. Now starts her most important job, keeping David safe as he navigates the world. I could see it when we first met the team on Tuesday. She's all business when that harness is on. She already loves him and has become attached to him. Although she was happy with seeing us, her focus was sure on David. I can see this is a good match, continuing the long tradition that those trainers make and making those teams come true. David and Jade, I wish you two the safe journeys and look forward to seeing and hearing about all your adventures. Thank you. Our last student I'd like to introduce is Michael and his guide dog, Lassen, who's a black Labrador retriever. Michael is from Los Angeles and is currently getting his master's in theo theology at LMU. He enjoys going to Santa Anita to watch the ponies and test his luck at the casino. <laughs> Michael loves being with his family and spending time with his nieces and nephews. Lassen is his first guide dog. First, I just want to thank everybody, and I just want to thank personally thank our sponsors, uh, Missy and Joe, our uh, puppy raisers, Jennifer and Jim, and the, our, our trainers, Jasmine and Sean. Uh, she's uh, a very smart 
little baby of mine. <laughs> and I just can't tell you how much I really do love her. She has saved my life already during the uh, traffic training with our crazy driver, Cheryl, that kept on, <laughs> she, she kept on cutting us off and Lassen just knew exactly what to do. And she, I'm the one that really needed the majority of the training. And I just want to also acknowledge our classmate that's not here with us, but is in her home in Toronto, Canada, and I'm sure she's watching us. We miss you, and, and we, we can't wait to have you back and have you with your own puppy so you could be up here too. Thank you. Lassen was raised by Jim and Jennifer. They are uh, represented today by Jennifer. They're from the Santa Clarita area. Good morning. It is a great honor to stand up here before you all, and especially in front of Michael, to represent my family as Lassen's puppy raisers. Lassen was our third puppy that we have had the privilege of raising for Guide Dogs of America. And even though the other two were amazing, Abby is an active guide dog, and Cora is a service dog for a medically retired Air Force combat veteran with PTSD. Lassen holds a special place in our hearts because our resident Black Lab Murr, who just recently passed away at 13 years old, loved Lassen from a young age. Feelings he unfortunately did not bestow on the first two puppies. <laughs> and Lassen taught Murr how to play and how to love another dog. He let her snuggle up with him on his big comfy bed, and we would often look over and see her wedged in behind him with her head resting on his rump. We are both teachers, so Lassen brought joy to all of the students at Saugus High School and the various schools that I visit for my job. Everyone smiles when they see Lassen on campus, and she would sit so patiently while the students relieved the stress and angst of their teenage years by petting Lassen. I still remember the day we picked up this beautiful, tiny black puppy at GDA. Our daughter was attending college in Pasadena at the time and asked if I would come and pick her up first so she could experience the best car ride ever. The only time that you can hold a GDA puppy in your lap is when you're the passenger on puppy pickup day and she loved every minute of the ride home. Michael, we are so happy that you now have Lassen in your life, and we hope that sweet, smart, and wonderful dog serves you well and helps you on your journey through life. Thank you. Once again, I would like to thank uh, everybody for coming today and congratulate class 427. Now go ahead and you're ready for your new adventures in this world. Uh, and last, I'd like to uh, bring Cheryl back up to close. Congratulations, class 427. We look forward to hearing all about your adventures. Class, you may dis be dismissed. <clears throat> if you are interested in raising a puppy and standing on the stage making these teams happen, we have a puppy raiser orientation in this building right after we conclude. Please jo join us for open house on June 8th at 10 a.m. We will have training demos, panels with recipients and puppy raisers, and this entire building will be full of an amazing silent auction. 
Our next graduation is a full service dog class on, on June 29th. We're almost out. Thank you for attending graduation for class 427. You may be dismissed.